Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be giving you a complete walkthrough of Durlag's Tower Level 4. You can see we have the whole map explored right now, however all of the enemies are still alive and uh, none of the puzzles are completed. So I'm going to be giving you a complete rundown of basically everything including the good loot to be found here. So the first room that you'll usually come across or that you should probably do is this one right here. This is known as the Forge Room. Now the Forge is uh. The only reason you're technically coming in here is for one item. You want to get the rune stone out of the charcoal kiln here. This rune stone, right? Ward stone, sorry. This ward stone will allow you to disable the traps in the room right here, which is known as the tomb. Or the tomb room, either or. So we're going to, uh, I'll show you how to disable the traps. This uh, rug, I guess it is, is very heavily trapped. If you run across it, you'll trigger all the traps. Unless you have that ward stone and you come up to this machine here. You click on this machine when you have the ward stone in your inventory and it will turn off the traps. So you'll be, bi you'll be good to go. So the tomb right here, this room contains the most slash best loot in the, uh, in the area. Both chests are trapped, so keep that in mind. Uh, this first chest that I'm at here, this is Leather Armor plus 3, and this mace is Croton Skull Crusher Mace plus 2. So it's one of the best leather armors in the game, basically. This chest here, this has 5,500 gold. It's got Large Shield plus 2. It's called Pelan's Shield uh, plus 2. And then this uh, sling right here. This is Arla's Dragonbane, aka Sling Plus 3. It is the best sling you can get your hands on in the entire game. Uh, outside of the DLC, I think. The DLC might have something better than that sling, but the base game does not have anything better than that sling. So, this, uh, you'll notice when you mouse over this tomb right here, it. Uh, changes the cursor it's a crescent moon and then there's like three stars on the cursor this lets you know that you can click on it and basically uh, go someplace else these areas are known as the compass rooms right here in the compass rooms you'll find four statues one in the northeast one in the uh, southeast one in the southwest and one in the northwest uh -huh. the every statue except for the one in the northeast the one that Nira is running around right now they will present you with uh Basically riddles, I guess you could describe it as, and then when you're finally ready to answer the riddle, you have to speak to the statue in the northeast of the room. So this is the tomb compass room, and the answer for the tomb compass room is number one, right here. If you need the answers to uh, these riddles and you don't want to see them in video format, I strongly recommend you visit almarsguides.com because I have the answers to all of these riddles written out on my website, as well as, you know, tons of other information i have uh map locations which show you where all of the best loot is across you know uh this floor as well as every other floor in durlag's tower and i explain basically every every puzzle in detail so the room we're about to enter right here is one of the harder fights of this fl floor i'm waiting there we go ski finally discovered that trap so there's going to be uh -huh. a couple Don't phase spiders in this room which are actually quite deadly and hard to deal with and there's other very hard hitting spiders so what we're going to do is we're going to open with our uh monster summoning right there which will allow they will take the hits instead of our characters and then we're going to run into the room with our characters the ones that actually can run into the room characters inside we did pretty good with the monster summoning if uh this room is going to be very hard for you in my honest opinion i died like eight times with these characters uh before i got some poison protection here and also before i started being smart and just walking in the room and using monster summoning because they take all of the hits but this room yes very deadly very hard when you're ready after you've completed this room this right here is the stone golem compass room you speak with him and he's going to give you three questions. Uh, and then when you answer all three questions correct, you'll be teleported to the compass room. 
The first question he presents to you is random. It, it, there's one of three different possible answers to it. Um, this one he asks for the youngest son of Durlag. The youngest son of Durlag is Furinball, right here. The next time he asks you for the second name of Durlag, which is Troll Killer. And then next he asks you for the second name of uh, Bolhar. I think Durlag's father, yeah. And that is Thunderax. You get all of those correctly and you'll be teleported to the compass room. You get any wrong and your character will be hit with a fireball. Inside the compass room, uh, let me see, stone golem compass room, the answer is number three. From the west it came and then the south. The east held it next and now it rests in the north. Now we just have to wait. There we go. Get teleported out. Now for the last and final compass room, we're going to need a ward stone in order to enter it. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to run over here and uh, wait for this to secret door and then go down to here. Wait for this secret door. There we go. And now let's go into the area, which I guess you could call like the pustule area or like uh, I, I, do, I don't know what you would call this area. The, the green area with like pustules on the wall. You can, you can search all of these pustules. They do have some loot. If you're very, uh, if you're concerned with getting like all of the loot, then you can go through this floor little by little and search all of these uh, little areas and get all of the loot. However, if all you care about is advancing the story, then uh, you'll be going over to this room in um, in the far southwest, basically the the most southwestern most room. There's going to be a named ghast in here that uh, that we need to kill. And also, don't be afraid to use uh, rest to skip time when your characters get immobilized. You'll notice my character right here, he has held, and I can either dispel it, wait for it to uh, fade out, or sleep, and then get rid of it that way. Sleeping is just a very quick and easy way to get rid of it. It also refreshes your characters, which is always nice. So there will be a secret door that leads down into this room. We just need to wait for our characters to discover it. There we go. We'll open it and the uh, the nasty gas will talk to us. It doesn't matter what you say to him. It's always going to result in combat. And as you can see right here, one of the items he drops is a ward stone. We need this ward stone. It's the only reason we're killing it. Now where we're going is over to the eastern side of this area, over here. There's going to be a secret door right here for our characters to uncover. And this will lead into uh, this section of the map right here. So Nira is immobilized. We're going to leave her for the time being because I want to show you how long it lasts. Come on, there we go. So this uh, room right here, this has some of uh, the best loot on the floor. Specifically this chest that just became, uh, just let me know it was trapped right here. This chest has a staff. This is, um, the staff is staff of striking plus three and the weapon is flame tongue plus one. You can see Nira is still currently being held via the uh, immobilization from the ghoul. There you go, she finally broke. There's one trap here that is uh, somewhat deadly. It's a chain lightning trap, so keep, it, keep that in mind. It will ricochet throughout the entire area. So this is the treasure room or the old throne room. It's referred to as either or, depending on where you're at. So. In this area, you can see it has uh, a massive amount of gold. It's got like 14,000 gold. Also tons and tons and tons of gems that you can loot from. As well as uh, the sh uh, magical short sword there, which I don't think is anything of uh, necessary, anything of note. And there's also some other goodies in this room too, if you decide. I just picked that. See, 72 gold in that box. Isn't that... Isn't that a great reward, 72 gold in the box? 
when you're ready, click on the, uh, the throne to be teleported to the last and final compass room. Let's talk to this statue. And as you can see, he gives us a, uh, a wall of text. So the answer to this one is uh, number three. Ultimately, Durlag uh, takes responsibility for everything that happened here. So you can see it ends with, in your eyes, you are the one to blame for all that has happened. Correct. Durlag blames himself. Once you have completed all three compass rooms, you have uh, completed the quote-unquote puzzle of this floor, and you will be ready to move on to the final boss of this floor. Speak with Durlag, Troll Killer's ghost right here, and tell him that you're ready to basically, uh, you're ready to basically kill the boss of the, of the area. Run over to this room where you find the little ghost that teleports you out, and you'll f see that this area has been opened. That little secret door is gone, and you'll be able to enter this room, which is the quote-unquote real throne room, and you'll meet this lady in here who uh, basically warns you about the upcoming boss and tells you about the mirror, which uh, is something that you can find in the boss's room and smash to make the fight either harder or easier for yourself, depending on RNG. I'll explain that a little bit when we get to the boss's room. Last but not least, in this chest here, you'll find a rare a magical item cloak, and this is a uh, cloak of the shield, which is a pretty darn good cloak, if I'm not mistaken. Also, the tomb throne room up here has a few items that I didn't mention earlier that I see listed on my website. They're not that important items. Uh, I think they're items you can get elsewhere. So that's part of the reason I didn't mention them. When you're ready to fight the boss of this area, you see this little stairwell that's kind of like in the dark and hard to see. You go up it. Now that we can see the whole map, the boss is going to be in the middle here, the Demon Lord. See this little area that I'm mousing over now? This is the mirror. You are able to destroy the mirror by left clicking on it. That's really all it takes. I'm going to space out my archers up here. If I'm correct, Almar needs arrows because he's out. So let's get him some arrows. So what the mirror does, while I'm doing this, I can explain it. What the mirror does is it basically creates a copy of every single um, enemy slash character in the room. These copies will be hostile to everybody, including the boss. So there's a chance they'll attack you. There's a chance they'll attack the boss. It's up to you how much of a chance you want to take as far as that goes. You can you can summon them and hope they attack the boss, or you can summon them and they all attack you and just make the fight harder for you. Like I said, it's up to you which, which approach you would like to take. I personally don't ever destroy the mirror, and it's funny, I just made an entire like 15 minute video, got up to this point, and I destroyed the mirror to show you what would happen, and the game bugged out and basically just froze on that screen. So let's uh, move Almar in a little bit. We'll move Nier in a little bit too. And Ski will move you in. Everybody will pew pew at the Demon Lord. My characters are quite well geared. That is worth mentioning. And uh, I have used a lot of books to make them more powerful than they would be otherwise. So that's why this was so easy. I'm also playing on easy. Uh, where I get like bonus to luck rolls and stuff like that. So uh, what he drops here. This is Helmet of Opposite Alignment. It basically gives you the opposite alignment from uh, you, the, the one that you currently have. Large Shield plus one. And this is the quest item that we need, Soul Taker Dagger. We need this item in order to finish the Tales of the Sword Coast quest line, which uh, once you loot this dagger, you go back to Olgoth's beard, and then a few scenes happen, and basically it's the end of the expansion. There's a few fights that take place and the end of the main quest line. So make sure you loot the Soul Taker Dagger. It is the most important item in this area. Last but not least, before you leave this boss room, see this guy right here, Doughton? Make sure you talk to him. Somebody in Olgoth's beard is looking for Doughton. And if you send him back home, then you can claim the quest reward for doing so. See, Doughton rescued. I got the journal update for that. And that is all there is to Durlag's Tower. Once you complete this area, you are done with the dungeon. So in order to leave the dungeon, this is what you do. You go up here and you talk to this ghost and then he will teleport you out. Make sure you've gotten everything that you want out of this dungeon because there's, I, at least I consider it a bug. Uh, sometimes 
you'll get stuck on the second floor and you'll be unable to open the door uh, that leads you, that lets you get past the second floor. Um, I don't know how common the bug is or if it's even a bug or if I'm just dumb, but make sure you're done with their lags tower before you leave or make sure you have a save file where you're still in their lags tower in case you need to reload to get back in to get some of the loot. So that's it. You just tell the ghost to send you to the surface. Then you'll be teleported to the surface and you are done with their lags tower. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope it answered your questions uh, about the final area of their lags tower. If it did help you out, be sure to leave me a like because that helps me out. And aside from that, I will see you guys around in future Baldur's Gate 1 videos. Peace.